Hey fellow garage golfers, Roland here with Garage Golf, where we provide extraordinary golf info for the extra ordinary golfer. As you can see behind me, I don't have my screen on. I have a huge giant box next to me. Obviously something's going on here in the Garage Golf studio. I want to show you a new product that we just got in that we're hoping will upgrade our video experience and for you guys at home to watch back a little bit on what we do here in the Garage Golf studio. Stay tuned and check it out. All right, thanks again for watching and welcome back. Here at Garage Golf, we provide information on golf products, golf equipment, golf simulators, golf technology, and pretty much info on anything golf related. So if you're new to our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And as always, if you're interested in building your own golf simulator at home, please make sure to reach out to us anytime at Roland at mygaragegolf.com. Or if you're interested in what products we recommend for golf simulators, Make sure to check out our landing page at www.rainershinegolf.com backslash garage golf. Now, let's jump right into the technology aspect of some of these reviews that we do for you guys at home. As you see, I don't have my screen on. And if you've watched some of our more recent videos, you've seen like, for example, what's in our golf simulator. I recently did a video on that. You've seen that one of the things that's always kind of frustrated me since my initial setup and since I initially built this was my projector. So I've actually gotten my hands on a BenQ LU951ST projector. Don't worry about remembering it. I'll put it in the description below. It's a really, really cool projector. It's a newer projector that's out. And here's what appealed to it to me is it has a 100,000 to one dynamic contrast ratio, 5,000 lumens, and it's super short throw for golf simulator. So 0.81 to 0.88 throw ratio. So if you don't know what a lot of that stuff means, when you're looking at golf simulators at home and you want to have your own projector, which we get a lot of questions about, you want to have something that has really high lumens, around 5,000 is incredible. You want to have something with really good dynamic contrast ratio. My current projector right now, which is a Panasonic, it has a 10,000 to one contrast ratio. The new projector that we just got has a 100,000 to one dynamic contrast ratio. So that's going to make a big difference in the colors and what we see there, hopefully, once we get this thing installed. So. Let's go ahead and show you this projector. I'll go ahead and take it out of the box. Now, I couldn't wait to unbox this one. Once I got it, I went ahead and opened it up and checked it out. It's a beast of a projector. I'll show you my current projector and this one side by side. I'm gonna to have to install it and get it set up. And then I wanna show you a difference between the two projectors and what you see at home and let me know what you think of the difference between the two projectors. Let me go ahead and show you this projector. I'll get you some more data on it as well as we unbox it and show you some pictures and video of the BenQ. LU951ST. All right, so I wanted to show you real quickly how I set up this projector. And here you see the projector close up. And I want to zoom up here and actually show you. As you see, I did drill a few holes uh, where I wanted to kind of test this in different spots. And let me go ahead and zoom in on that image for you here in just a minute. And here you basically see the pole that I've set up. All it was is honestly four screws and I just hit the studs there where you see the line drawn in. And originally I set this up without this pole, the ex extension pole that you see here. Uh, but I went ahead and added it later. It was a little easier to install with the pole and it actually made it easier for me to set up my actual projector on the screen that I have here in my simulator when I use the pole as well. Here in the very front, if you see that little lever right there, that's a really cool feature. It allows you to tilt your actual projector at any point. Here you see the, the lever a little bit closer, but you can tilt it and then lock it into place. So really, really cool setup 
for the mount. Uh, all in all, it took me about 10 minutes to set this whole thing up. So I wanted to kind of show that to you. And then it attaches here with a few different plates. There's four plates that screw into the top of the projector, as you see here. And it screws in underneath to the circular piece here. And that was pretty much it for the whole installation. So just kind of wanted to show that to you. Really, really easy setup altogether. I want to show you one other cool feature as well here in just a second. You see I have a little drop down here. Let me get underneath and show it to you a little closer. Okay, so this is a view from right underneath the actual image. Now, what you see here are two actual knobs. One is a vertical lens knob, and the other is a horizontal lens shift. So if your image is too far up or down, you can use this vertical lens knob, the one on the left, and it will actually adjust your lens up or down. And if you turn the one on the right, it will actually adjust your lens left or right accordingly. So let me show you from far away where my projector set up and I'll show you how exactly I use these features to set it up on my golf simulator screen as well. All right, so the projector you see on the left is a brand new BenQ projector. The one on the right is my Panasonic projector that I had here in my studio. So if you look at the projector, the Panasonic is directly in the middle of my screen and directly where I hit off the golf mat here. So showing that back to you, you'll see that the BenQ projector is very much offset left of the screen. So basically what you can do is use that lens shift feature. And let me show you from behind the actual projector as well. All right, so here's my screen here. Right above me is my Panasonic projector. And to the right of that, all the way over here is the BenQ. So we look BenQ probably closer to the right edge of that screen, as we see there. But, with that vertical lens shift feature, I was able to project that image directly onto my screen, which I'll show you here in just a minute, the actual image itself. But I wanted just real quickly to show you the actual projector, how I had it installed. I didn't do a full video on the install because the process, honestly, guys, was just so easy. It took less than 10 minutes to install this thing. Really, really quick process. I'd rather show you a little bit more on the setup of the projector and how I did that, because that one is one I, I set up pretty easily as well, but I thought I'd show it to you guys on video. But overall, wanted to show you those features of the lens shift and the vertical lens shift as well. And then right underneath, if you look right up there, you have a zoom feature where you can zoom in the lens as well. And you also have a focus feature and that's how you'll adjust the focus of your lens. So overall pretty cool. Let me show you from behind real quick. There's the cords. I have three cords going to it roughly. One is the audio out cord, one is an HDMI cord, and one is the power cord. So that's how I set it up. As you see here, everything's set up nice and easy. So I'm ready to show you guys a little bit more on the image of the actual projector as well. All right, so we've walked you through how we set up the actual projector here in the studio. The next thing I wanted to show you is, let's say this was the first time we turned this projector on. I wanna walk you through the few steps and very minimal steps that I had to take to get this thing up and running and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the on button now on the projector. I just hit it right now and we're gonna see how long it takes for that screen to pop up. So this was one of the things that kind of stood out to me right away was the instant on feature and that thing's ready to go now and it's at full brightness and ready to go. My Panasonic projector before would take almost a minute for that bulb to light up and be ready and be at full strength. So that was definitely a big difference for me as far as what we saw. So what I have it on here now is I actually have it on a basketball game just to kind of show you the quality of the image. Um, now all my lights are on right now so I want to kind of show you really quickly. If I were to turn the lights off, and I'm not sure how much of this is going to project on camera or not. And we've got actually a really good game here between Miami and Boston. But really, really incredible picture quality. This is the Vivid Color Scheme, which is what they recommend for golf simulators uh, when you actually set it up for golf simulation play. Uh, so really, really beautiful colors, great screen. This thing doubles as a home theater, no problem at all whatsoever. So something I wanted to kind of show you. So I'm going to turn the lights back on just so we can see for visual purposes what I was doing. And I want to show you how we adjust that screen and what we're basically doing there. So let's go ahead and go into the menu setting. And I want to show you that first. So the very first thing I did is, as you saw when I set up the projector, I use the vertical and the horizontal lens shift feature, which is a really, really awesome feature 
to move my lens left and right accordingly because again, it wasn't set up right in the middle of my screen, which is part of the appeal of this projector is that you have the ability to do that. And I was able to move it left all the way from where it's at because it's off centered a bit. And I was actually able to adjust it vertically as well. So that was really, really cool, really awesome feature. So the very first thing I did was I went into the menu feature and you're gonna see picture mode. It's set up as vivid, that's where you want it to be. That's the best picture profile on here by far. I didn't adjust anything else under that setting. Uh, display, let's go ahead and show you display. Now what I wanna do now is I wanna show you the test pattern. This is the first thing that I pulled up. And this is the test pattern. So this is what we're looking at and this is how I used it to adjust my screen and everything. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any part of the image um, either on the floor, on the side screens, on the baffles or anything there. So you can do this a couple of different ways. Now, when I first started this, my image was projecting onto my ceiling and it was projecting onto my floor because I have this set up about 15 feet away from my screen. Uh, ideal setup would be somewhere around 13 to 14 feet more than likely with the throw ratio that this has, which is 0 0.81 to 0 0.88. But don't let, that, don't let that throw you off because you have so many options on how you can fix this. So the well, first thing I could do is I can go into keystoning and keystoning will allow me to adjust the image vertically and horizontally. So if I can go up or down on the keystoning, the only thing I don't like about it, this is more for like if you don't have a nice square setup, is it does adjust the corners individually as you see and you see the image starts to get distorted with the keystoning feature. So, I honestly just left keystoning at zero. I didn't adjust keystoning at all. And I think where keystoning maybe will come into play more is how far your lens is shifted. So in other words, if you don't have it pretty much horizontal, very similar to what I do on mine, and you have it more angle down, this is where keystoning would come into play. But in my setup, I didn't need keystoning. Um, one of the things I did do though, is I did corner fit. Now you can go to corner fit. I'm gonna give you an example here. Upper right hand corner. I can go up or down, you'll see the numbers adjust accordingly on the upper right hand corner. So if I go up, you're gonna to start to see that image go all the way up on the upper right hand corner. And I don't know if you can get this on camera or not, but it's projecting onto my baffles. So what I did was I went to each corner individually and I adjusted it both vertically and horizontally to where I got to a level where I felt like it was perfect for my setup. And on mine, that was somewhere around 50. So, and I'm gonna still play with this a little bit because there's still a little bit of space that I have to work with but I had it around 50 for that. And then again, if you were to hit left and right, you can adjust the left and right side and you'll see that adjust on your screen as well to 60. So I went ahead and just set it up the way I had it. I think it was 47 and 50, somewhere around there. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on back. So I did that for each corner individually. You have the option to fix all of those. Now, if you mess up, all you gotta do is hit auto and it'll reset it all and you can start over again. So really, really cool feature. I'm gonna hit back now. And then this is the one that really just kind of set this whole projector apart for me was image resizing. So again, when I had an image originally, it was all over the place and I was concerned that maybe I would have to take it down again and move it. But we have this feature called digital shrink. Digital shrink will allow you to shrink the entire image all at once or make it bigger depending upon how far away your projector is from your screen. So this is one of the features that I, I use to get this thing pretty much fine tuned exactly where I wanted it. So, if I were to minimize digital shrink all the way down, you're gonna see how small this image will get now, essentially, as I continue to click it. So you see that I have a huge image or I can make it as small as I need to based upon the size of my screen. And we'll go all the way down to where it was, all the way down to zero basically, which is 0 0.75 times the image. So that's the digital shrink feature there. Now, if I go back up to where I had it before, then I can make this fit my screen again based upon where I had my original setting. Now, I don't know exactly where it was, so I'm gonna fine tune it now as we're going through this together and just kind of show it to you. But I'm looking at each corner to make sure that I have the image space right, that I have it set up exactly where I want it to be without it showing up on my baffles and everything there accordingly as far as what we're looking at. So I think right about there is pretty darn close and this is how I would adjust it accordingly based upon where I'm at. So once I had that set up, I would basically hit okay and it would save it exactly where I had it. Now, I notice on the top it's hitting the baff a little bit, so that's perfect right there. Okay, now I'm gonna hit okay and that's it. So that's all I really had to do was set, to set up this whole image was to do just two or three little things and this thing was ready to go. It only took me, as I talked about when I set up the installation, about 10 minutes to install this thing on the ceiling and about 10 minutes for me to get this thing up and running exactly the way I wanted it. So 
That's really awesome. I, I spent about two hours on my previous projector messing around with it and figuring out all the settings that I like. I didn't go into network at all. Um, I don't have it set up for network. Um, when you do first set it up, let's say you have it on a shelf behind you, you'll have different options. It's not set up originally under front ceiling. This is how I have it. It's basically an upside down image. If you click right, you're gonna see that change. This is, I can't see it, but <laughs> different ones based upon how you have it set up accordingly. This is rear ceiling, it feels behind the screen, front ceiling, front table, side table, I believe, rear ceiling again, and then back to front ceiling. So depending upon how you have it, this is how you can set it up accordingly. Um, I didn't change remote receiver. I didn't go into anything else other than just the settings that I've kind of showed you. And I'll probably play around with this a bit more, but I just want to kind of show you out of the box how easy this thing is to set up and how easy it will be for you to get this thing up and running. So let's go ahead and show you a little bit of quality on the images. Now I've shown you the TV. Let me take you back into the TV mode and I'm going to go back to menu and I'm going to take off that, I'm going to take off that grid now that we set up. So we'll go back to display, the test pattern grid, and I'm going to, you can put it as red or white, and I'm gonna turn it off now, all right? So now we're gonna go back, and we're gonna see the actual screen pop back up, and I think I kind of messed around with it a little bit, so I'll adjust it accordingly, but uh, it's on my baffle now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust that back using that digital shrink feature really quickly, and I'll go ahead and bring you guys back in, and I wanna show you um, not only the quality of the image with TV like we're looking at now, but I want to show you um, how we also will look when we set up a golf simulator and we show the actual golf simulator programs, whether it be the Golf Club 2019 or E6 Connect. So I'm gonna do that now for you here in just a minute. All right, so on the screen now, what you see is E6 Connect. We're on Harbor Town Golf Links. This is with all the lights on on the screen here. And I'm gonna show you basically how I set up my simulator when I play when I'm not doing videos for you guys at home, um, I, I tend to turn all the lights off minus one little light that I have here in the studio just so I can see the golf ball. So I'm gonna show you on the image quality. Again, this is with all the lights on in here and even when I do videos, I even have studio lights on which even washes the image out even further. But I'm not gonna show you that right now. I just wanna kinda wanna show you the screen and what the image quality looks like. And you see again, now that I've set up the screen, it's pretty much covering the entire screen. I've been able to adjust that the way I want it. It looks great. I have a little bit of a, a black line on the top of it just because the baffles um, hang down a little bit. So it doesn't allow me to go all the way up to the top, but it does allow me to go all the way to the sides and to the bottom, which makes a huge difference. So let's go ahead and kick off the lights now. And again, I don't know how much of the quality was gonna relay it back at home, but this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It looks crystal clear. Everything looks great. Again, this is E6 Connect. I wanted to get kind of a hole with some water on the side and show you guys at home uh, but overall, this thing looks incredible. I'm really, really big fan of it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take you to one now on the Golf Club 2019 and show you that as well. And in future videos, I'll be showing you some more gameplay as well. Um, less worried about being able to see me on the image, but more worried about showing you guys the actual simulator screen with the lights off. So just wanted to kind of show you a quick video capture of that on actual E6 Connect. Let me show you the Golf Club 2019, and then I will bring you guys back here in just a minute. All right, and here I am pulling up the Golf Club 2019. I wanna show that to you again with the lights off so you can see a little bit of the image quality of the actual program itself. Again, nice, bright, crystal clear image. This thing looks incredible. I can't really explain to you, again, on camera because I know YouTube resolution and stuff gonna bring this down a little bit as well, but this thing looks like I'm looking at a TV on my wall here. So it just looks incredible. Uh, it looks really, really nice. The image looks really good, just as good as it looks on my 4K monitor. So I'm really impressed with the image. Let's go ahead and take you into a round of golf real quick. And we'll pick the club at Ravenswood just to kind of show you guys that. I'll go ahead and create a match there. Begin round. And again, if you're familiar with the golf club, you can drag this anywhere on the screen but let's do a quick flyover and show you guys the image quality. And again, really, really cool. Take a look at the water, clarity of that, the way it looks on the screen. I just kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit more, you know, as far as how this looks on the projector. But overall, really, really impressed with the image quality. And again, 
I'm going to be showing you guys more videos, hopefully with both of these programs using this new projector. But I really wanted just to give you kind of a sneak peek on what it looks like. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think of the colors and how everything comes out. Again, hoping that this looks good back on camera as, as it does here in the actual studio. But very, very impressed with this uh, projector, this BenQ projector so far. I don't, I don't think I could really give it a high enough praise on it. Uh, but I'm really, really impressed, really, really happy with it. And it's definitely something I'm looking forward to using here in the future. So all in all, in the end, wait a minute. You guys can't see me there. That's not going to work. Let's get some studio lights back on. All right, a little bit better. So all in all, this projector is absolutely incredible. I can't give it enough praise. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And for when I do my normal golf simulation stuff, and that means things like just playing here in the simulator without having to do stuff at home and bring videos to you guys watching, it works absolutely perfect. Is it going to solve my issue with the screen being washed out because I don't have enough light in here? Absolutely not, but that's not what it's intended to do. Part of this may be my camera, which I'm looking to upgrade here in the future. And part of this could just be that I just don't have enough light in here altogether. And I need the studio lights like what you see here to project on me so you guys can see me back on video. Again, here it is with the studio lights and here it is with no light at all. Obviously the image looks incredible in the background, but you can't see me on camera. So I've tested numerous things. I've tested studio lights like you see here. I've tested just the overhead lights without studio lights. Let me show you that real quick. And this is just the overhead lights without any studio lights shining on me as well. As you can see, it's, it's still bright enough, but the image is still a little bit washed out just because of the overhead light. Now, again, that is not at fault at all with the projector. This is just something I wanted to relay to you guys at home as far as one of my main issues has always been lighting. So I'll probably still continue to use the green screen, but the appeal now is I'm going to have a green screen that's gonna cover the entire screen because of this projector that I have. So. That's something that I want to keep in mind. Let me turn back on the studio lights as well now. And here you see, this is a full lighting setup, the way with the lights on above, lights on, key lights on the right and the left of me, and then one to the side of me here. So, wanted just to kind of relay that to you. Um, overall though, my thoughts on the projector, and there's one point that I haven't made yet is the price. So, if you've been asking what the price is, I do want to relay to you the price is a little bit higher than what you would see for normal entry level stuff. The price MSRP on this is around $4,800. So I get it, it's a bit pricey. But again, I want to reiterate that this is a high quality machine, probably geared more towards middle to high end setups for golf simulators or even for home studios. Now, will you regret spending the money on this BenQ projector? Absolutely not. Feature wise, this thing is absolutely loaded. It's packed with features and it's definitely something that I feel is incredible quality. It blows away the Panasonic projector that I have here in my studio. And I look forward to continue using it for videos moving forward. Now, when I get a better camera, I may figure out the lighting situation so I can use the projector and show you the image a little bit better. But for now, I'm probably gonna use, continue to use the green screen so I can show you nice and clear because nothing beats a green screen as far as showing you the image and the actual uh, golf simulator program that I'm using you know, for you guys to be able to see it at home behind me. So I will continue to use that, but the green screen is gonna be even better now because it's gonna cover the entire image behind me thanks to this new projector. So I want to um, be here to answer any questions that you have. If you have any questions on this projector, reach out to me anytime at Roland at mygaragegolf.com. Again, don't forget, if you wanna set up your own golf simulator at home, I wanna be your go-to person. Check out our landing page at www.rainorshinegolf.com backslash garage golf. Those are, that's some of our affiliate links are on there. So if you are looking to purchase something that really helps out the channel, if you use those at no additional cost to you, of course, any questions directly email those to me and we'll help you get your setup built for you at home for your custom needs and budget. So if you haven't joined our Facebook group, join that down below. That's where we communicate with you guys at home, answer any and all of your questions. And uh, if you have not yet done so as well, please make sure to subscribe to our video. Give us a big thumbs up for this video. That's, how, that's what helps our channel grow. And make sure to click the bell notification for future videos like the one that we released here today. So we got some new stuff coming up for you guys. I'm excited to bring it to you and uh, hopefully continue to answer any and all of your questions at home. But until the next time, as always, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Looking forward to doing more info on this projector for you moving forward. And until the next time, as always, keep on golfing. Thanks again.